Good morning, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. We didn't have one last week, but we are back this week. And this past Sunday, we discussed uh, Thyatira as the tolerant church. And Jesus had a lot of harsh words to say to Thyatira because they were tolerating the false prophetess Jezebel. But that may bring up a question to us because tolerance is something that is highly prized in our culture right now. And about the worst thing you could say regarding someone is that they are intolerant. So are Christians, in fact, to be intolerant people? Is that what Jesus is saying to us in the letter to Thyatira? Well, the first most important question is one has to define what do we mean by tolerance? There's a false understanding of tolerance that is pushed in our culture right now. And that understanding is that I would have to agree with all ideas as being equally valid, all actions as being equally valid, because there really is no such thing as truth, nor is there any such thing as moral versus immoral actions. Uh, that is a false understanding of tolerance. It does not line up with what tolerance meant when it was originally a virtue. But even more importantly, it's a self-contradictory idea. If all ideas are equally valid, then that means the idea that all ideas are equally valid and the idea that all ideas are not equally valid are both equally valid ideas. But of course, they can't be. And all it really serves to do is to undercut any real discussion of ideas and any real working towards uh, moral uh, understandings and moral uh, words and uh, lifestyle. So. Uh, this idea is very uh, popular. Uh, recently, it was in the news that there was actually a university up in Vermont where they were bringing a teacher, in, uh, a speaker in, and even some of the professors and many of the students were so against the man's ideas, which it's okay to be against his ideas, but they would not even allow him to speak. And actually, a teacher who did not agree with his ideas but had brought him in for the, the lecture uh, and trying to remove him from a secret location where they'd had to go because the students would not allow him to speak in public. She was actually injured, ended up in the hospital, had a concussion for a week, and this was in the name of tolerance, that his ideas couldn't be accepted. It's a self-contradictory system. But there is an actual tolerance historically, and that meant that you valued an individual, you had a respect for the person. In biblical language, it would be that I respect anybody, even if I strongly disagree with their ideas, they still bear the image of God, and that's going to control the way I speak to them, about them, and interact with them. And secondly, what it really meant was a civility in discourse, that the way we spoke to one another uh, was regarding respect and uh, having an openness. It did not mean, however, that I would not have conflict with you or your ideas. That's the false understanding now that you can't speak against anyone's ideas or lifestyle or their choices or their behavior, because if you do, that creates mental anguish for them and there is no way to have a society that would exist in any such thing. So Christians are called to real tolerance, not the false tolerance. And how we interact with this in, within the church and within the culture, Paul deals with in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 to 13, where he's writing to the Corinthians and he says, I have written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slander, a drunkard or a swindler. With such a man do not even eat. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked man from among you. And so what Paul is saying there is, first off, we recognize there's a difference in the way that we as individual believers in the church responds to the surrounding culture. And Paul says there's, there's great tolerance in the public square. People can speak and act in ways that we do not agree with, and we are not out to try and shut them down and stop them. That's not our responsibility as believers. But there's a difference when it comes to someone inside the church. And so while outside the church, I would fully affirm and support and work for anyone to have the right to speak and act as they desire and to have a right to, example, come to a college and speak ideas that I disagree with. Inside the church, it's a different thing. And Paul says you cannot allow this kind of behavior, nor can you allow false doctrines to pop up, which is what Jesus was speaking in Thyatira. They were allowing 
this false prophetess inside the church to speak uh, lies rather than truth, to compromise essential doctrine, and in so doing was leading people to immoral lives. And so Jesus' word and Paul's word is, in that case, you must expel the wicked person and the wicked ideas from among you. So Christians are called to true tolerance, uh, but when we engage with the surrounding culture, the way that tolerance works out is a little different than the way it works out when we are within the church. So I hope this helps you as you think through how we are to live it out. And I want to remind us that the most important thing, both inside and especially outside the church, is what will cause the prospering of the gospel. So in all your relationships this week, uh, I encourage you to treat people as the image of God and look for ways to speak the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody this Sunday. I hope you have a great week. God bless.